Hi, I'm Jörn Sill from the laboratory of Douglas Cowan in the Department of Anesthesiology at Children's Hospital and Harvard Medical School. Today we will show a procedure of optical mapping in Langendorf perfuse red hearts. We use this procedure in our laboratory to study the spread of electrical activity on the cardiac surface. So let's get started. On the morning of the experiment, mix up 4 liters of Krebs Henselite solution. After mixing up the solution, remove undissolved particles with a 200 micron filter using vacuum filtration. First, use 1 liter of the prepared Krebs Henselite solution to dissolve 11 millimoles of BDM. Second, take another 100 milliliters of Krebs Henselite and mix in 10 millimolar di 8 aneps in DMSO to a final concentration of 5 micromolar di 8 aneps in solution. The water jacketed glass reservoirs, the bubbler, and the glassware used here are all from Red Naughty. Transfer the two solutions to the reservoirs pre warmed to 41 degrees Celsius. Oxygenate the solutions with 0.2 micron filtered gas using a submerged bubbler. Pump the solutions from the three stock reservoirs through the wall-mounted Langendorf system with peristaltic pumps and low-absorption silicone tubing. To harvest the rat heart, First, intraperitoneally inject a 200 to 250 gram Lewis rat with ketamine and xylazine to induce deep general anesthesia and with heparin to prevent blood coagulation and myocardial ischemia during explantation. Once the rat is completely anesthetized and does not respond to a toe pinch, proceed with removing the heart. Begin the surgery by first removing the anterior chest wall to easily access the heart and great vessels. Then, carefully dissect the surrounding tissue and open the pericardial sac. After identifying the inferior vena cava, ligate this vessel with 5O proline sutures and explant the entire heart-lung block. Immediately place the tissue in ice-cold Krebs Henselite solution in a 50 milliliter beaker on ice. Quickly identify the ascending aorta and dissect it from the surrounding tissue. Insert an appropriately sized cannula into the aorta, taking care to avoid inserting the cannula too far into the aortic root and interrupting obligatory perfusion of the coronary arteries. Secure the cannula to the ascending aorta. Then, place the rat heart on the Lingendorf apparatus without introducing air bubbles into the cannula. Retrograde coronary vascular perfusion is now established with a warm, oxygenated Krebs Henselite solution from the pressure head of the Lingendorf apparatus. Now remove extra tissue, including the lungs. After cleaning, perfuse the heart for 20 minutes to permit recovery of function and stabilize the rhythm. As the heart is perfusing, introduce a very thin thermocouple temperature probe into the left ventricular cavity. Suture the probe in place with 5O proline sutures and adjust the settings of the water circulatory pumps to maintain the temperature of the heart at 37 degrees Celsius. Minimize motion from the perfusate dripping from the cardiac apex by placing a piece of gauze in the effluent receptacle. The heart is now ready to be loaded with potentiometric dye to acquire electrographic and optical signals. To load the potentiometric dye, dye 8 aneps, into the heart, switch over to the perfusion line that contains Krebs henselite mixed with fluorescent dye. 
Because the atria are not sufficiently perfused with dye introduced through the coronary arteries, an 18-gauge cannula is placed in the left and or right atrium, and an additional 50 milliliters of dye solution is slowly administered into each of these chambers. During the loading procedure, gently place three ECG leads on the surface of the heart that is not facing the optics used for mapping. The first electrode is positioned on the posterior apical portion of the left ventricle. The second is placed on the left atrium, and the third acts as a reference electrode on the aortic root. The atrial and ventricular electrographic signals are subsequently amplified, digitized, and displayed alongside optical signals using the software. An oscilloscope is also used to visualize the surface ECGs in real time and to assure adequate pacing. Set the ECG amplifier at 0.1 Hz for the high pass filter and 150 Hz for the low pass filter. Position the CMOS camera using the XYZ adjustments. A piece of glass that is positioned in the focal plane of the camera is placed on the surface of the heart so that the area of interest is in focus and centered in the acquisition frame. The camera and optics are mounted on a vibration isolation table to minimize resonant frequencies. At the same time, on the right atrium, place a coaxial pacing electrode controlled with an isolated S48 electrical stimulation unit. This will pace the heart at 300 beats per minute. Set the electrical stimulation as follows. The rate should be 5 pulses per second a delay of 0.2 milliseconds, a 2 millisecond stimulation duration with a strength of 6 to 12 volts, and mode set to repeat and single pulse. For optical recordings that lack motion artifacts from contraction, the heart needs to be electromechanically uncoupled. Do this by again switching perfusion lines to Krebs Henselite solution containing 11 millimolar BDM. Between acquisitions, perfuse the heart with unadulterated Krebs Henselite to help preserve the viability of the preparation. Configure the software recording parameters to 2000 Hz with a 128 by 128 pixel array. The frame interval should be set to 0.5 milliseconds and gains should be set to 5x for the camera amplifier and 8x for the on-chip gain. The on-chip gain should also be set to 12 Set the software's camera control for a shutter delay of 500 milliseconds and record 4,000 frames at a duration of 2,000 milliseconds. Turn off or shield all room and equipment lights to eliminate background noise during the recording. The LED light illuminates the heart only during the optical recording to reduce photo bleaching and dye toxicity. Control the light source shutter with a 5 volt pulse delivered through the control panel by way of a D2A board in the computer. Following acquisition, process the data using different filter settings. The default settings are generally used, except when adjusting the band stop pass filter which is set with the left boundary at 44.0 and the right boundary at 98.0. Afterwards, the recorded information is processed and used to generate a movie. Data from one acquisition corresponds to the local electrical activation at 16,384 sites on the heart surface over a period of two seconds. The software allows these local signals to be directly compared with one another and with the atrial and ventricular electrographic recordings. Data by mapping local electrical activation to color and render this information as an animation showing the spatiotemporal electrical activation on the cardiac surface. To create such an animation, first use the software to temporally and or spatially filter the data. Next, select a start and end time for the animation. Third, 
Map optical signals to color based on resting light intensity of each pixel. Fourth, overlay the resulting color data with a picture of the heart. And finally, generate the animation. If the perfused heart preparation was motionless during recording, the optical signals show one distinct peak for every pixel involved in a change of the emission intensity of dye 8 aneps. These real-time imaging movies demonstrate an excitation wavefront propagating across the epicardial surface of the heart, as well as the simultaneously acquired electrographic recordings. We've just demonstrated a high-resolution technique to optically image action potential movement on the surface of a Langendorf perfused red heart. When doing this procedure, it is important to quickly remove the heart from the anesthetized red to avoid myocardial ischemia. The myocardial cells need to be adequately perfused and the heart must be completely loaded with voltage-sensitive dye. So that's it. Thank you for watching and good luck with your experiments.